Today I'm going to be answering your Redbubble questions and bringing you what is now the fourth installment of Q&A Sundays. If you're ready for this, please do drop a like as that would be very much appreciated. And with that said, let's jump straight into it. Hi guys, my name is Phil and welcome to the Money Game YouTube channel. For anyone that's new around here, I make print on demand content to both motivate and to give you guys tips and tricks on how you can improve your print on demand shops. If this is the first time you're coming across me, please do click that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss out on any future videos. We've actually helped a lot of people to get their first online sales through sites like Redbubble. Now, if you're the kind of person who needs extra information, down in the description, I have a free print on demand style a guide and for anyone looking to turn this into something more full-time i also have a paid step-by-step -step guide that's linked down below before i get into answering your questions i just want you guys to know that if you do have any questions make sure to put them down in the comment section if i see your question i'll most likely heart it and i'll try to answer it in my next q a sunday video i've also been looking at some of the questions that have been popping up on some of my other videos so i'm going to be answering some of them today and yeah with that that said let's jump straight into this first question is coming here from crystalline rules and uh, she's saying if you open a second or a third shop can you keep the name of your shop original or can you keep your original shop name or do you have to come up with a different one each time now when it comes to redbubble they only allow you to have one shop name once if someone else already has a shop name you want unfortunately you can't have it and with that said if you are then going to create more shops you can't use the same name redbubble actually doesn't allow you to use that name again especially when you're signing up a new shop so i hope that answers that question and next up we have kaija uh, saying what do you think about uploading public domain images like the ones uh, which are on pixabay or pixabay on redbubble now first i just want to say for those that don't know what pixabay is it's a website that allows you to download images and these are images that you can actually use on print on demand but when you're using these images, you need to make sure that you change them up. So with that said, you can actually use Pixabay images on Redbubble, but you have to make sure that you are editing them in some way. It actually does pop up in the terms and conditions of use within the Pixabay website. Next up, we have Abdo pretty much saying, do the dimensions 5,000 by 5,000 fit well on all of the products on Redbubble. From my own experience, I would say, no, because there's certain products that don't look good with these dimensions. For example, greetings cards and posters won't look as good if you're using these dimensions. The dimensions I would recommend are 5,000 by 7,100. I've actually made a full video talking about dimensions, which you can check out down in the description. If you want more information, check that out. But I understand the dimensions that you're using, they're usually dimensions that are suggested or the max dimensions on Canva. So if you're using Canva only, try using other free software, for example, Photopea or Photopea, as that allows you to create, you know, bigger dimensions than this. Moving us on, we have Philip. So got another Phil in the house here uh, saying, do all these tips work on other pod sites or are you specifically now giving tips for Redbubble? Now, most of the tips that I give for Redbubble can easily be applied to other print on demand sites. Now, with certain print on demand sites, I don't cover them as much, mainly because a lot of you guys are mainly interested in Redbubble. If you're not just interested in Redbubble, let me know down in the comment section what other print on demand sites you are interested in and i'll try to cover them a little bit more but yes most of the tips that i give on redbubble literally apply to all the other print on demand sites as they're all very much pretty similar moving us on we have robert and robert is saying here is it better to diversify with designs or to stick to your chosen niche he's then gone on to explain how he's in the sub genre or sub niche of gaming and since he's new to redbubble he feels like this is a bit of a handicap to him before actually having 100 plus designs now robert i just want to say first of all that's a great question and i'll be more than happy to answer this one uh, my advice for anyone starting out on Redbubble is to diversify the shop 100%. You want to make sure that you're creating as many different styles of designs as you can within your first 100 to see what works. Don't focus solely on one niche as it's not guaranteed that that one niche that you're focusing on will work. 
think of it as a way of doing market research to see what people actually like from you. The best way you can do this is by finding niches with low results and just making designs for all these different niches. And when you get your first 100 designs from the designs you have made, you then need to look for which niche has performed well. And if you wanna solely focus on that niche moving forward, you can do, or you could even create another shop that's linked specifically to a niche you already know that you can sell, if that makes sense. Next up, we have Salmon saying, please can you explain more about setting up one shop what do you do and what do you put in there and when can you set up more shops so i feel like this is pretty much like what i've just explained so when you're starting up with one shop obviously you want to make sure that you have a variation of niches that you're covering once you've reached 100 plus designs you want to then look to see which of your designs are doing well and then you want to see if there's a specific niche that stands out if you find one that stands out if you want to create another shop focused solely on that niche you can do that and in terms of what you are selling you don't have to do it just by the design you can have a look to see which kind of products you're selling most off and if you're selling something that's a little bit different like mugs for example maybe you can then make a shop that's focused on mugs if you know obviously you found a niche within that product that works quite well next we are sweeter here pretty much asking if there's any tools out there that allows you to see if any quotes or designs you're using have copyright on them now there's quite a few but the two i'd recommend for you guys to try out the first would be trademark here trademark here is pretty much very easy to get access to you literally search trademark here.com and something like this will pop up if you have a certain keyword you can search it in there and it will pretty much show you if there's any sort of trademarks on the keywords that you're using and the next site you guys can use is called uspto it also allows you to check trademarks on things but i feel the easiest one to use is trademark here mainly because you can simply type something in and all the information you need will be there next up we have dina here and she's gone on to say a lot but just to quickly summarize what she's saying is when she uploads a white and a black design sometimes on the white design she'll go on certain products and upload the same logo or same image she used for the black one so she's pretty much asking if it's okay to do that and if it's not a problem as there will be a product that pretty much has the same design on it now when it comes to red bubble i feel like that's not too much of a problem because obviously if on one image the primary thing you've uploaded is the white image you should be okay i think the only problems come from trying to upload the same exact image twice as the primary image and from your explanation you're telling me that you have two different primary images and then on one of them you've just changed the secondary image on a certain product so there's completely no problem in that in terms of the questions for this one i think i'll leave it there guys if you have any more questions keep dropping them down in the comment section i'll also be keeping an eye out on my other videos to see if any new questions pop up once again this series can only continue as long as you guys keep bringing me questions so please do and if you have made it to this point of the video please drop a like as that would be very much appreciated and down in the comment section comment down more q and a's and i'll try to respond to as many of you guys as possible always remember that everything is rigged in your favor and manifest success <laughs>